Okay, so GM everyone, I'm excited to be here today to be presenting MetaMask and MetaMask Snaps. My name is Christian Montoya, like he said. I'm the senior product manager for MetaMask Snaps at Consensus. I have a lot to share with you today. I had planned a two hour talk, but then I found out it's only 20 minutes. So I think if I talk fast, I can get through everything. So let's dive in. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the wallet as a public good, your role in our future, how Snaps changes everything, and resources to get you started building with Snaps. And I'm gonna be leaving you uh, with those resources so you can get started after this conference. So first of all, the wallet as a public good. Let's talk about what that means. I admit that when I was writing this presentation, I had to look up the definition of a public good. It turns out that it's not a measure of quality, so my initial assumption was wrong. So I had to ask the smartest entity I know to help me come up with a definition. And apparently, as the AI tells me, well, there's a lot here about benefits society cannot be withheld, yada, yada, equitable, clean air and water. But what I want to focus on is the last sentence of this definition, where it says, the provision of public goods requires collective action and cooperation, as they are often too expensive or difficult for individuals to provide on their own. We're going to save that one for later, but for now, let's talk about the wallet. First of all, is MetaMask a public good? I think definitely. It's self-custodial. You're in charge of your MetaMask. We don't control how you use it. We don't track you. We don't withhold access to it. If you've ever received an email from MetaMask, it wasn't from us. That's just a phishing attempt because we don't collect your email, so we don't know that. And it's open source. You can read all the underlying code. You can understand how it works, and you can even contribute to its development. It's free to use, and it's free for DApp developers as well. You can build a DApp that interacts with the blockchain just by using our API or our SDK. And this simple and highly accessible option has made MetaMask the tool of choice for DApp developers and has made it possible for many of them to build DApps for free with no cost. So what that means is that at the nexus of DApps, devices, blockchains, users, developers, and assets, we have the wallet, MetaMask. When you connect, when you sign in, when you transact, and with everything else that you do in the ecosystem, the wallet is surface zero. It's key to every experience that you have in Web3. It's part of every single action that you take. And so we all know MetaMask as something that you use to manage your accounts, to manage your funds, your assets, and to interact with dApps and the blockchain, and so on. But as the ecosystem grows, and with all the innovation that is happening, the use cases continue to expand. MetaMask is now something that we use to manage our identity, our sovereignty, and our privacy. It enables many different use cases, including social media, gaming, and artistic expression. So whether you want to be a DeFi degen and farm food tokens, or you fancy yourself to be an art collector who sometimes dumps on your followers with your alternate addresses, or maybe you're a bridger, a trader, a staker, an art collector, or a Web3 gamer, MetaMask is for you. And what is a wallet anyway? I have to bring this up because there's been a lot of talk this week about whether or not wallet is really a good term for what we're building. And I know some people have suggested some alternatives. Maybe we call it a passport or something else. Well, to be completely honest, no term is ever going to be perfect. And a term doesn't have to be perfect for people to understand what it is. It's kind of like when you use your credit card and you tap to pay, you don't actually tap, you kind of just wave it over the little symbol, but you know what tap to pay means. It means that you can pay without having to insert your credit card. And wallet as a term is pretty good. But when I talk about where we're going, I often like to describe MetaMask to people as a companion. It's there alongside you, and it's there assisting you with everything that you're doing in Web3. It's kind of like a pet in an RPG that also has lots of inventory slots and maybe some cool armor, and you can ride it around and so forth. I'm getting carried away with that. And there's a lot of unique dynamics. When you have more than 10 million users each month, a lot of our users really just think of MetaMask as my MetaMask, right? They have funds in their MetaMask. They say, I have my funds in my MetaMask. I claimed an NFT with my MetaMask. I voted in a DAO with my MetaMask. To them, MetaMask is what they use, and that's how they think of it. So that's just a little side note, but I want to get back on track. So let's talk about your role in our future. The wallet is the gateway to everything in Web3, and that unique role has allowed MetaMask to grow along with the ecosystem. To give you an idea of this growth, MetaMask actually had over 100 million users in 2022. 
And that's an amazing example of just how relevant Web3 has become. We have a long way to go, but I think we have a lot to celebrate about what we've accomplished so far. And I want to take a chance to celebrate this together, because MetaMask is not built in a vacuum. Raise your hand. I want to see some participation here, OK? Raise your hand if you've ever contributed to protocols or standards. Protocols or standards. OK, fine. Have you ever deployed a smart contract? OK. Have you ever built a DAP that uses MetaMask or interacts with our API? Submitted feedback or bug reports or contributed to our open source repositories? Taught people about crypto or onboarded anyone to Web3? Complained about us on Twitter? OK. You have all played a part in our continued development. And you deserve some credit for that. Even other wallets with unique features and user experiences have challenged us to improve our own product. And that is something that we can celebrate together. Because ultimately, we're all building something that will be better for users and enable them to do more in Web3. So now I want to talk about your role in our future and how we can build together. And in order to do that, I need to address some baggage that I think we all have working in the software industry. And I say this from personal experience, because I've been working in software for more than 15 years. And I often have to challenge my own biases and avoid falling into patterns that I've learned in some toxic environments. So let's talk about legacy software thinking. And I call it this because I know in these events we often talk about Web 2 versus Web 3, Web 2 versus Web 3. And we give it too much credit because this is not just an upgrade from 2 to 3. OK, we're talking about systems that we know are broken and harmful to users. And we're building something that is a complete paradigm shift, right? So I'm talking about legacy software systems and how we can shift to a better mindset for Web3. So let's talk about what these legacy mindsets look like. First of all, we have competition. We're all competing for total addressable market. Everyone wants TAM, and they want all of it, right? We have uh, value extraction. How can I take a cut of whatever people are doing, the value they're creating? How can I siphon some of the value that's flowing through my software? We have monopolization. Software's eating the world, and we're eating each other. We have walled gardens. Do you want to reach these users? You have to pay my taxes. You have to pay my tolls. You have to jump through my hoops. And you're subject to my policies, which are often capricious and unfair. And we have winner takes all. Okay, This is the legacy mindset that a lot of us are used to and we still operate in often today. So let's talk about a new way of thinking. Where before we had competition, now we have collaboration. Where before we had value extraction, we have value creation. In what we're doing, we create value every day. Instead of monopolization, we have public goods. Very topical, very relevant, fits this talk. And instead of walled gardens, we have open platforms, which are way more fun. As a developer, I would much rather build on an open platform than build in a walled garden where I may be subject to whoever's controlling that garden and might, design, might decide to ban me at some point. And instead of winner takes all, we have we win together. So let's shift our thinking and think about what is the way forward for our ecosystem. I will tell you what will not work, OK? Each team building one product, one team per product. Many different products competing with each other for the same users, competing with each other on features and so forth. And a fragmented user experience, fragmented identity management, fragmented asset management and DAP compatibility, and fragmented protocols, and so on. We all know that fragmentation is bad, OK? This is something that I learned working with Windows 95, OK? And I'm aging myself with this reference, but we know that fragmentation is bad. We know that it's not good for users. And I think that what we need to do is defragment Web3, OK? So can we do that together? Let's do that. OK, so let's talk about how we make a public good even gooder, even better. Let's talk about how we make a public great, OK? In order to do that, Let's first talk about the MetaMask SDK. The MetaMask SDK is making MetaMask available everywhere. And so you already know our DAP API, right? And you know that you can connect to MetaMask from websites. But with the SDK, we're now taking MetaMask to a lot of new environments. So if you're building a native mobile app, a desktop application, if you're building a game in the Unity game engine, you can now connect to MetaMask in a seamless way. And you can facilitate blockchain interactions um, in ways that were never possible before. So tell your friends, tell your family, tell anyone who hates JavaScript that you can now connect to MetaMask with the MetaMask SDK, and you can bring Surface Zero to your users in entirely new experiences. So I have an example here. It might not show up. Let's see. This is connecting to MetaMask from an iOS app. 
And you can see it's going to MetaMask, you know, the flip back and forth. And this is actually an iOS example app here. And it's also, um, yeah, so you can see how it's getting there. So this is the example iOS app. And then these are the screens in MetaMask. This is all happening in native iOS, OK? This isn't JavaScript. This is native iOS code. And likewise, I have here, let me see. How do I get out of this? OK. This is a Unity game. I'm just going to show you the beginning of this connection. And I think you should see MetaMask pop up on the left. Let's see. A little further. OK, so there's a MetaMask mobile application connecting from a Unity engine game on the desktop. And you can see how it's syncing here. And you can see how it's going through both the connection and sign-in flow. And this is all happening without JavaScript. This is happening in Unity with our SDK. All right. So where was I? So next, I want to talk about um, how we can do more. We're always getting people who are asking us, how can we add new features to MetaMask? What if MetaMask could do this or that, right? What if I could put my Bitcoin in my MetaMask? What if I could use two-factor authentication and use Google Authenticator in order to uh, add two-factor authentication to my MetaMask accounts? What if I could you know, get notifications about things that are happening on chain and send messages to other wallets? Well, if we were to try to do everything ourselves, that wouldn't be possible, OK? There's way too much that we could accomplish just as one team. So if we cannot possibly build everything that the ecosystem needs, why not give developers the power to build those features? This is the idea behind MetaMask Snaps. MetaMask is now an open platform for innovation. The Snaps API is a trustless execution environment that runs at JavaScript applications inside of MetaMask, and these applications are protected by a permissions model. Each Snap is a program that's developed by you, and it runs securely in our sandboxed environment. And at installation, the Snap will request permissions from the user, and this gives the users consent and to be able to understand what it is that they're installing and how it will work. And this gives you features that go way beyond what you can do with dApps today, and these are applications that live inside of MetaMask. They're portable. And then other dApps can interact with these snaps as well. So this is an example of what an, uh, a user sees when they install a snap. And you can see where it's coming from, the permissions that it, it is requesting, the version information. And in this case, this snap is going to be doing transaction decoding, which is very useful for users. And it's going to have access to the internet. So in this way, the user understands everything that it's going to do. And so at this point, you might be wondering, OK, what can you do with Snaps? What are all the features that this makes possible? So there's a wide range of use cases, and this is not a complete list. But to give you some examples, you can add support for other blo blockchain protocols. You can add support for EVM extensions or things that are not supported by the base EVM wallets today. Um, you can enable privacy. You can use ZK proofs. You can enable ZK technology inside of MetaMask. You can ad enable identity use cases, such as decentralized identity. You can store verifiable credentials inside the wallet that the user takes with them securely. You can um, enable all sorts of security features, such as transaction decoding, monitoring accounts on behalf of user, and notifying them if something is happening to their accounts. You can even do delegation from within a snap. And you can do messaging. You can do notifications. And you can actually reach users directly into the wallet rather than asking them for email addresses, right? which they don't necessarily want to provide. You can reach them at Surface Zero in the interface that they use every day. And so you might be wondering, what are all the API interfaces that make this possible? You are getting all of your questions answered today. These are the APIs that we have currently, and we're definitely adding more over time. You can actually display custom dialogues, which can be used for transaction flows and signatures and so forth, prompts to collect information from users. You can notify them right inside of MetaMask. We're actually adding a notifications interface, and you can notify into the wallet. Um, you can store and manage data that's encrypted by default, and it's for that user. You can control non-EVM accounts and assets. You can actually derive for different uh, paths, different curves, and so forth. You can derive arbitrary entropy. You can do transaction decoding and populate the pre-transaction window with that information. And you can even schedule actions with cron jobs, which means that you can run actions even when the user is not interacting with their wallet. And so how this works, very simple. It's an NPM package, JavaScript source code, bundled into a single, single file, published to NPM, and we provide tons of tools that make this possible. So very simple picture here. You put it on npmjs.io. You have a website. They go to your website. They connect. It installs the snap. MetaMask will ask them if they want to install the snap, and they can do that. 
And then they'll have a setting screen like this within MetaMask that shows the snaps that they've installed. In this case, I have a Filecoin snap and a StarkNet snap. And then when I go to other dApps, they can use those snaps, right? So now all of these other dApps can actually interact with StarkNet or Filecoin or any of the other features that these snaps provide. So I'm going to be showing you some examples. I think the first one here I have is a video. Let me see if I can get this working. StarkNet is really interesting because it's an Ethereum layer 2, but it is not EVM compatible, right? So it seems pretty ridiculous to say that we have an Ethereum wallet, and yet it doesn't support certain layer 2 networks because they have a different address format or a different language, right? But we enable StarkNet through this snap, and this is actually a user interacting with a StarkNet dApp, and they're actually able to send Ethereum on StarkNet with this snap. They can send, they can receive. It actually deploys a smart contract account for them. And so it facilitates all of that through MetaMask. And this is a custom uh, confirmation that is generated by the SNAP that shows them all the information and allows them to do transactions. I think at this time I have some other examples. OK, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, everybody's talking about account abstraction. There was a hackathon in India. And there was a SNAP that was built in a couple of days. And it won the award from the Ethereum Foundation for the best implementation of account abstraction. Okay, And this is a SNAP. This was built in a few days by a, by a small team. And to show you an example of what it does, I'm going to go like this. Yes. So this is using uh, MetaMask. It's built on Polygon. And so you can see they're using Polygon here. And then it's actually going to connect and make accounts. So it shows the EOA, and it shows an abstract account, which is a smart contract. And it allows the user to manage that smart contract with their EOA with MetaMask. So the SNAP facilitates the user operations to then be able to sign on the smart contract account with MetaMask. And so you're going to see a custom confirmation coming from the SNAP. And then when they approve that, you're going to see the standard MetaMask signature request that you know. And this is facilitating that signature from that EOA on that smart wallet, on that smart contract. And then all of that information is then fed into this dApp from that SNAP. You can build account abstraction implementations today. You don't have to go through all of the effort, the rigor of deploying your own extension or your own mobile app. You can do this within SNAPs. And yes, here's some sample code. OK, too technical. I said this was non-technical. Let's get out of here. All right, what else do I have? Let me see if I can do this. OK, this is a, uh, this is a scam. This is a phishing contract. I'm going to show you something cool here. Oh, no, let me see. I want to go to this one. OK, this is a phishing contract, right? When you interact with a phishing contract, MetaMask doesn't tell you very much about what's going on. OK, I know the transaction might fail, but I don't know why. OK, this is very, oh, this is very opaque. This is not clear. But I'm going to install a SNAP that can help me with that. So connect and install. You see the permission request. It's going to connect to the SNAP. And then you're going to see an installation request. And it tells me the different things that it does. This one will actually read from the Ethereum blockchain. Because it's using the MobyMask Fisher registry, which is a contract that is deployed on Ethereum. And now I have it installed. Well, what can I do? Let's do this action again. Let's see what happens. Oh, wait a second. What is that? There's a new tab. What does the new tab say? Beware. This address has been reported for phishing in the MobyMask Fisher registry. You should not interact with this address. Thank you, Snap. You have saved me from losing money and losing all of my financial sovereignty in Web3. That's amazing. Thank you for clapping. I built the Snap. I really feel appreciated that you like that. OK, cool, cool. OK, I think I'm done with my, um, my examples here. I'm going to go back to my slides. I'm getting too worked up. OK, let's see. So the wallet is now an open platform. Snaps makes a new world of innovation possible. And you can build Snaps today using our Canary build of MetaMask, which is called Flask. If you go to metamask.io slash Flask, you can download Flask and start building your Snaps today. And we provide all these tools. And we're going to be building, bringing Snaps to the extension and mobile very soon. So key takeaways. MetaMask Snaps allows anyone to add new features to MetaMask in a way that is secure, decentralized, and keeps users in control. You own your Snap. You operate it how you want. You choose how you want to monetize it or how you want to engage with your users. And now is the time to build Snap so you can be ready for our launch to the MetaMask extension in Q3 of this year. So how do you get started? Here we go. This is a QR code that will take you to my Getting Started Guide. It has all of our tools. It has plenty of examples. It has videos that you can follow, tutorials built by our amazing developer relations team. Go to metamask.io slash snaps. Go to slash flask to install it. That's the guide. You can check out the StarkNet snap and the MobyMask snap that I showed you today. Make sure to follow MetaMask Dev on Twitter. Thank you. And this is how you can get in touch with me. All right. Thanks very much.